It is July 12th. Happy summer. It's Thursday night, 8 o'clock in Winchester. And we are live on the radio, live on tape himself is here, Ron Cox. Hello. Hey, is this like a radio show and a TV show? That's the whole point. The oh. whole point is Anthony's a very busy man, but yeah. thank God he helped us. He's a great guy. He helped now us get this Anthony's together. Now, here? What, what does he do? He works with Dave Gauthier. Now, what's his position? Um, I don't know. You have to ask Anthony. But you should know this. I don't know anything. I'm just a host. Well, look, at he's helping you out. You've got to... He's great, but the thing is that we have a show, and visual radio is set up so I don't need a staff. Oh, okay. It's radio for your TV. Oh, I get it. Okay. So, but we're going to talk a lot, right? So what we, are we, we talking about? We, well, we're talking about live on here? tape first. Okay. You're my guest. You had me on. I was on a yes, show I'm called Live on host. Tape. Just tell your audience that. I'm normally a host. This is a normal. month and a day ago, on June 11th, today's July 12th, he had me on his show. I can't right. believe it's been a month. A whole month has gone by. Now I'm on your show. Yeah, but we have planned turn, that. Literally. But we, I, I, thought, I thought we were going to talk a lot about access, which we'll do tonight. Yeah, I think we should talk about access. But I won an award after 22 well, years. Well, that's what I want to say. Live on tape. My first question to you is, how long have you been doing live on tape? 22 years. 1990. 22 years. Yeah. So, it's older than visual radio by five years. That's, that's, that's but I was on obvious. TV in 79 and proved it on <laughs> yes, this show. That's right. So we so both you go way back. Up. You go way back. No doubt about it. And 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 um, you are a cartoonist. Yes, that's but primarily. I, um, I actually started doing the cartoons and art and social work. Then I got into community media, kind of on the side. When you did the first live on tape, what station? It was Malden. I was uh, one of the first volunteer members of the, uh, in the organization. I think my wow. number is like eight or something. First, so wow. Yeah. This is good. So I started out as, as a volunteer saying, hey, I want to get involved. When I found out, uh, you know, a place existed like that, I said, well, gee, I was doing stuff at BFVF, which is... Oh, you were? Oh, yeah. Boston Film and Video Foundation. I'm one of the founders of BFVF. You are? Yes, I, I am. I had no one idea. Of the one of the 12. Over there uh, on Boston Randall. Street. Uh, it was on Boston Street, and then at, before that it was on, uh, over in uh, Brighton Ave. So you were doing cartoons, and then you helped found Boston Film and Video. Yeah, because I was doing film. I was doing film. I was doing f animation. What, what year? Oh, this is 1974, 75. So you're earlier than me when it comes to this stuff. Wow. Well, yeah, but it, was, it wasn't really community media then. It was, it was really... Uh, doing film. Doing yeah. film, and, and, and I went to school you know, for the arts. And then what had happened, actually, how BFA founded was a, a group of people around. We would gather together because we borrowed each other's equipment. Okay. So Susan Wall one day said, you know, we get a grant, and if we organize, we can get equipment donated to us. And we said, well, that's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. And that's exactly what happened. We, John Rubin, uh, Susan Wall, uh, Steve, uh, I mean, so many great names at the time, Stuart Fordyce, Michelle Schofield was our first uh, director that we hired. And she's now runs, she's the, uh, one of the vice presidents of Mass College of Art. Yeah, she, she was great. She this was is a wonderful place. Uh, it was a wonderful place. So that's no, what that happened. No, that is a wonderful place too, Mass College of Art. Oh, Mass College of Art, that's right. Both. I, I'm an alumni of that. And, uh, and actually, I saw myself just recently because a good friend passed away, Bob Raymond, who was another BFFer. He was the very first uh, tech guy we had. Now, I usually have to worry about my guests and their mics, but you just put yours on, right? You're so good. See, he's a professional. Usually my oh. guests don't know that about well, I asked if it was on. It is on, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say something. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, see? Are we live? Is this like a live this show? This is live. Yeah, we're, we're live. On. And, and um, we're on Verizon contiguous channels. I guess Woburn gets us. Yeah. Which is a whole are you, other are you, You've seen them all, then, right? You're on uh, MATV, right? Oh, yeah. No, uh, visual radio's on MATV, yeah. but not live. Right, okay. But, yeah, because um, it's like more than uh, live and tape. We do live and tape live once a month. And the show's evolved. And one great thing about live and tape, and I did bring, bring in my entry. I don't know if you can show clips, but uh, no, that's the entry. Um, I'd have to go in there and... Right. You do, you, do you do a post? No. Oh. We're live on the air. How can I do a post? Oh, because oh, oh, we're live right now. Here, yeah. We couldn't. But that's for <laughs> it's the fun. other stations. But, yeah, for... Uh, I thought right, you told me you to know. bring stuff to show. No? Le no, I didn't say that. Oh, I think... I don't have a crew. Oh. But now, see, I'm exposing you to visual radio, which is good. I know. It's good to do um, that. You know, yesterday there was a... Comcast party for Open Voice. Now, do you know about Open Voice? Yes, and, and it was also one at my house, my apartment building, too. It's really? tonight. It's actually tonight. In your apartment in building? My apartment building. So these are very nice people. It's uh, Think Argus. Do you know who they are? No. Think Argus is a company. Now, Comcast is investing a lot in this Open Voice. Right. There were five cities around the country, Peterborough, New Hampshire, mm 
uh, Kalia, whatever, now, Hialeah. Do you know exactly what it is? That, yeah. I, mean, I missed the party because I came to this one. Well. <laughs> uh, when does the party start, Joe? Well, the, the party yesterday was 3.30 to 5.30, and what they were basically doing was signing newbies up. Yeah. So you and I don't have to be there. Right. Because right. just they have a little coffee and right. fruits. And, and I think they, get, they, they tempt you because they give us something away free. Well, they're giving food away. No, this one's also giving away a, a, a raffle. Oh, well, Comcast is now putting stuff on the internet. So they have made in Medford.com. But Open Voice is in Malden? Well, uh, because I, they're I not don't supposed know. To be in Malden. I don't think it is. I, oh, then it's a separate thing you're talking about. I think about this is part. a separate thing. Comcast is running in apartment buildings. Oh, okay. To, just to get people involved and get... That's not Open Voice. Okay. Open Voice is happening in six cities around the country, right? I didn't think Malden was one of them. Yeah, because Medford okay. would be the localist one, right? Right. They now, would, they I bought... I think Malden should have gotten it, by the way, but... Well, no. Because Malden has a great access station. That's oh, the whole okay. point. Oh, that's the, I see what you're saying. Um, where access doesn't really, uh, where it needs some help. Right. They are putting these open voice things in because they bought Universal. Yeah, but what, what, tell me what an open voice is. I mean, well, what is it? let me tell you first. Comcast bought Universal NBC. Yeah, for content. Right. And so the FCC made them start this open voice. It's an FCC kind of thing. They're, re they're fulfilling a requirement. To, to like balance out that they get all this content? Yes. Yeah, so, well, that, to, to, to give a voice to the local community. Okay. So now. But isn't that what public access is supposed to be? Yeah, well, how come my show is only on contiguous channels in Medford? I don't know. I there you go. Well, see, there you go. Can't so that, that's why, why open is this show not seen by everybody? Because that's why there's open voice now in Medford. Do you get it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Now okay. you understand. Um, so, but we'll see what they do with it. I mean, have they done anything with it? Well, here's the fear. The fear, people, is that this is a, a project to stop access, so that once you put access on demand channels right. and on the internet, you don't have to have a channel for access. Right. So it might be Comcast's way of creating the end of access. Or, okay. or and as we all know, that rather than to do it, because you know, to them, it's it's money going down the drain. But, but it's not the their money because is, it's a it, search. Well, that's right. I mean, I'm sure your audience understands. They don't. Why. We have to explain it all the well, time. Well, they'll explain it. Uh, I mean, public access uh, is actually part of a cable act back in the 70s that when cable providers go into a community, the community has a right to negotiate with that cable company for the use of the public rights of way and the underground conduits that make it possible for them to hook up to the houses and make millions of dollars. So they have to give something back. That's the idea of giving back to the community. The, the, the problem is, though, uh, every community doesn't necessarily negotiate a good contract. In Massachusetts, we're lucky because it's very, they're very educated, a lot of communities, and we've got great lawyers, and, and it's a great movement in terms of mass access and, and organizations that really understand how to get the best deal. But not everyone does get a good deal. Malden has one of the best access centers around. And well, people ask me. In, in 2008, we got best Northeast Best Outstanding Access Center. Now, people ask me, what's a good access center? And I say Malden. Not well, because thank you. you're my friend. No, I, I, but I would because say Because you too. do a good job. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, it, it's not me. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it, it well, is, you're a core part of it. Right. You have I, a great I, team. It's almost like the, the, I let this team do what they do best, and that, uh, that is connect to the community. A good access center has to connect to the community so the community is using it. It's a resource. And if it's not being used. Uh, there's a problem with outreach, obviously, and, and obviously communication. Uh, you know, that's because we're very active. The show's going on right now, you know, uh, uh, obviously here too, but in Malden. Uh, and it's, uh, we have two studios, a Studio A and a Studio B. Uh, studio B is like a hot set, similar to what you've got going here. It's, uh, things can be automatic. Well, I create a hot set, you know, <laughs> environment. Yeah, very hot. Uh, uh, and, but you don't change the shot, do you? I mean, it's just one no. shot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a radio for your TV. Right. You can turn off the uh, uh, video and you can still hear a good show. Right. Because this would be good on BUR. I, I would we're, hope so, yeah. Yeah, I, what I we're mean, doing I, is... Doing radio. I, I'll tell you how excited I am about access, still, after yeah. all these years. Last week I had Jimmy Church on. Yeah. Now, you know him, I was friends with Bobby Hebb who wrote Sunny. Yeah, yeah. Very close friend of mine. And so Jimmy Church was telling me about Bobby Hebb being in his band when Bobby got out of the Navy. He's and does the audience know the, the band they're talking about? I mean, well, Bobby Hebb, Sonny. My, my audience should know that Sonny, Bobby Hebb. Right. And Jimmy Church is from Nashville, so he phoned in from Nashville. 
But he told me that Bobby sent him up to New York and they worked with Mickey Baker and did a song called I Wish that Bobby wrote. Now, even Bobby's manager didn't know about this song, I Wish. I found it on the internet last night. Right. And now, Visual Radio has discovered a rare Jimi Hendrix tape with Little Richard. You know Little Walter's Time Machine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Little Walter was on the show, pulled out a Jimi Hendrix, a Little Richard tape. We discovered it. Last week, we, found, we discovered I Wish by Bobby Hebb. So I have so much fun investigating media. Right. Well, in the old days, that you kind of were into that world of Boston music sound. And, uh, you and with the records I was making, the, records you're making, the and articles I wrote. Yeah, and exactly. You, were, you helped promote that early you know, rock, what would you call it, you know, that... Uh, we had the rock and rock. roll scene. We had a, yeah. an independent rock and roll and scene. And they called you the really Count. I remember that. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm the artist formerly known as the Count. Uh, John Butcher, uh, who was now back, he, yeah. he went out to California, now he's back. He played the uh, national anthem at the at Fenway Park. Is that oh. cool? Just he's like Jimi great. Hendrix did. Just like, uh, yeah. and he's a lot like him in, in a way. Well, did you see the Showtime movie Hendrix? No. There's a Showtime movie called Hendrix. Guess who the guitarist is? Uh, it, it was it him doing it? It's Butcher uh, it playing all the Hendrix parts. He's on Star Trek: The Next Generation. He is on that movie. Uh, what's that movie about? Um, Dead Deadwood. Yes. Oh yeah, he was in there. And did you see? Yeah. Oh, did you he, see I, that he was the clip. blacksmith. He, I have all the clips of him making the movie. He had a blast. Those those guns are realistic. I mean, they're really real. But he was. He's the soundtrack guy. Yeah, exactly. But he's he, also in it. Yeah, they they decided to put the soundtrack guy in, and he was a black blacksmith. Yeah. In the old western, you never see black men in the old west movies. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, but he did Star Trek Next Generation too. And now he's with too. Charlie Farron, and that's a great uh, from all com combination, exactly. So and Robin Farron and yeah, uh, they, they call themselves where they call themselves. It's uh, they're called the FBI. FBI, right? Farron Butcher Inc. Yeah, I get this email. Charlie and John are together, but don't tell anyone. It's it's a big secret. And it's like, well, FBI. I love them, but the whole world doesn't know them yet. You yeah. know, uh -huh. Charlie was the lead singer Joe Perry Project. Right. And Butcher had a bunch of albums out on Polydor. I did lighting for Johanna Wilde. That's, that's did how, you? I, how I knew him. So I was also doing lighting. It's another thing. When, when uh, you know, we graduate from college, you think, okay, I'm ready to be a great filmmaker, because that didn't happen. <laughs> I don't get that. But anyway, you have Anthony to do other did great job. lighting for us tonight. Yeah, very nice. Because you can tell the proof of the pudding is right there on the monitor. Right. Oh, well, there it is, too, yeah. See, this is fun. We've had 13 minutes, 12 and a half minutes already, and all we do is talk. Yeah, so that's how you do it. So you talk it, and, and the thing is, you don't have to worry about the cameras because it's one shot. Hey, how you doing? It's radio. It's and just it's, my radio. For those show. people listening on radio. Hmm. <laughs> so where's your mic? You're down I there? I put it on the desk because I'm, I'm loud. Really? After 33 years, I kind of know where my voice goes. It goes there. All right. So I'm, you know. It's probably got a boosted way up. So what do you want to talk about? I wore my shorts, you want, you but I can't see them like that. Access? Well, I well let's, let's talk about your award. So all these all 22 right. years, you finally won an award. And I answered it about 12 times. I really did. I did twelve. I came second one year, two thousand and five. I came second, and uh, but it's not the same. I wanted, I went first. It's best in the nation. That's, which is pretty cool. Uh, and congratulations to you. And the other thing is the the program I do. I also work with kids and and uh, do a Able project. Vision? No, they won too. By the way, Able Vision, great. They deserve to. Oh, tr Project Triangle does a great job with these. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny now they say men with adults with abilities. Set of disabilities because you know they do have disabilities, but it's what they do. It's great. They they produce, they shoot, they act. They're in their talent. They're, they're everything about that show is done by the people you see on the camera. Adults with abilities. That's right. So they won uh, access uh, uh, with ability uh, category, and that's I think their fourth, fifth time too. But I was going to say, uh, so the kids video workshop uh, is a program that I actually designed in Salem. For those who know David Gotti, he he used to be in Salem. Actually, uh, uh, say, uh, David's very familiar with the Kids Video Club. Uh, oh, because you had it in workshop. Salem. I had this, that's why I kind of made it. Happen. Okay, so let's, let's backtrack a little. You started in Malden as a volunteer. Yes. Did you join the staff at some point? Uh, actually, this is a good story. Uh, uh, I used to work at the YWCA with kids, and I would bring them down to MATV to use the equipment, make TV okay. shows, right? That's, that's why I was there. So the, bar, the executive director said, you know, you know Ron, uh, you know, you're doing such a great job with kids. Uh, you know, we'd like to teach, pay you to teach the kids. I said, well, I'm already being paid by the Y. He said, no, no, on the side, or maybe you should think about doing this for a living. So uh, I did start teaching kids video uh, for money, and what a great concept. And then uh, she said, well, there's a position opening up in Salem. Why don't you go for it? 
So what was your position in modeling? You were just called a coordinator? I or was a video teacher. Video teacher? Yeah. Oh, so I didn't realize that. So then you went up to Salem. Well, it wasn't that easy. Uh, I, went for, I was down to two people for the finals. It was me and a woman named Ruth Durkee, who became Ruth Kennedy, who's a wonderful person. Uh, and it was two, came down to two of us. So when I went to meet Bob Mio, who was executive director to get hired, I, I took uh, one look. He introduced us both. So his is Ron. He's second two, and and you tied. I mean, this interview is going to decide. And I, I took one look at her, and I met her. I said, "Nice to meet you." And and she's absolutely beautiful. And I, and I say, "There's no way that they're going to hire me over her." <laughs> so I said to her, "So uh, where are you working now?" And she said, "Oh, a place called Wakefield Community Access Television, WCAT." And I said, "Well, good luck." That night, I called WCAT. <laughs> I said, "Hey, I need an opening." Oh, right. And, and Robert Haig, who was running it at the time, said, uh, what are you talking about? I said, no, oh, oh, okay. Well, maybe not now, but I got a feeling. Just let me, just give me a call. It's Ron Cox. I'm interested in the position. And I hung up. Well, you gave, gave him a, your number. I gave him the number. So uh, I think maybe two weeks later, Ruth gives her notice. Robert calls me immediately. He goes, all right, how the hell did you know? And who the hell are you? I want to meet you. And that's how I got the job. So you hadn't known Robert before that? No. Only by the phone. Only and by what the phone. was like, 95? This is 94. Okay, because 1988, the late Gene Sylvester and I had an office building in Wakefield. And under our office, really? we had an office in a building. Right. Under our office I bet you I knew the building. Robert Haig, 27 Water Street. Oh, that's right. That's where it was. Oh, my God. Because Chris Because he Cooper, worked for Comcast at the time. Well, it wasn't called Comcast. I was upstairs Warner. with Gene Sylvester, who really? was the editor of the Daily... Night, because it was the newspaper. Daily thing. Times and whatever. And, yeah. and, and so, uh, you know, Gene, my friend, and I had an office upstairs. At so you're above Water Street. Oh, my gosh. We were Crystal of... Communications with our CCI report, the Crystal Communications report. And yeah. I was managing Jimmy Miller from the Rolling Stones, and we were right there. Wow. So I go downstairs with a guest, Gary Santarella, a guy I produced. And Bob Haig had that folk show. That's right. It's called uh, Acoustic Cafe. So he put Gary Santarella on for me, and it was the first time I ever ran a camera in 1988, wow. summer of 88, down yeah. at Wakefield Cable. And so Time Warner, it was a Time Warner Amex building then. So <coughs> you went over to Wakefield. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I got the job, and, uh, and Ruth only lasted like one year. Huh? She was gone in a year. She got pregnant. Oh. So happened. Bob calls me back. He says, oh, I wish we hired you. Why don't you come back? Because you won't get pregnant. Why don't pregnant. you come to Salem? You won't get pregnant. Well, I, oh, I could still have a child with someone else. But, uh, but, but he said, uh, come, come, to, come to Salem, we got your job for you. <coughs> I said, no, I told him to take the job away in Wakefield. How can I do that? <coughs> and so, what were you in Wakefield? I was the uh, program director. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just put on the program. You know, the worst thing about that, about oh, that right, job... Oh, right, I saw you and Bob working together. Oh, yeah, it was really just a two-person operation. At the high school. Uh, 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 you moved was, from Water Street over to a high school. It was, a, I think, a junior high at the time, or elementary school. I remember going over and visiting you yeah, guys. It was on Converse Street. That's where we... Uh, so that's probably where I first met you. Oh, here's another funny story. Uh, so that's where exactly where the studio is. WCAT is in an old elementary school building. We had the, you know, the first floor and upstairs was storage. This is access history. Listen it up. It really is. It's, it's an incredible story because it was a great building that they had and a uh, great studio and it was well thought out. But all of it was not used. It was just storage. And we used for props. And, uh, and of course, uh, during Halloween, we made it a haunted studio. And it was great for that. But eventually, I wrote a grant for a thing called the Senior Television Workshop. And I got a grant to, to work with the seniors. Well, it was so good. This woman, Marion Whiting, uh, loved the building so much. And then I left. I went to Salem, by the way. I said, uh, Salem finally, after three years, made an offer I couldn't refuse. So I did go to Salem. And what was the position there? Uh, there I was a uh, uh, director of outreach and production. It was, okay. a, it was a great job. It was. Uh, and you sponsored visual radio, I recall. I think so. I know so. Yeah, that's right, Salem. Thank you. And that's where I met David Gautier, and, uh, who was great. We, I, we had the same office for the longest time, for, well, for six years. So you and David shared an office? Shared an office, yeah. Wow. It, was a, it was a fun time. He, lis he listened to a lot of uh, sports radio. Yeah, so Dave can t knows everything about sports. And so, you know, Dave here at Winkham, they let us sit in on the interviews, and Dave was interviewed. And now he's ED here. It's a, it, it is, it is kind of like that. So I went from, uh, uh, I got the job right in Wakefield, there. then I went to Salem. And then what ended up happening, <coughs> they, uh, the executive director left. 
this kind of... A Wakefield? Uh, no, in Salem. So they made me acting director. Okay. But uh, they didn't end up picking me after nine months, which I found very inconvenient. You know, not after nine months, you'd think... And were you living in Malden? Uh, I was living in Gloucester then. Oh, so that so was I was commuting. It was, it was a great commute. I took the train. Salem to, yeah. Gloucester, Salem. Gloucester, Salem. Not bad. It was great. Nice. So, uh, but because they didn't hire me as ED, they, they kind of went to a different direction. I, uh, so I, I got to move on. Then the Wakefield position became open. Robert moved to Lowell at right. LLC. Right. So then his job became open. I went for his job. Which they is knew me. LTC. Uh, uh, is it LTC? Low, Lowell low. Television. Yeah, that's LTC, LTC right. And uh, yeah. Telecommunications Company or something like that. So I, then, I, so I, then I became back, uh, they hired me back at WCAT as the ED. So what was good about that is I got ED experience, because I was only acting ED, and then I got to be a real ED. And, uh, and I moved visual radio over to Wakefield to be with Ron. Really? And I brought I you a lot of uh, it, Well, uh, and then I was there for three years, and then the Malden position came open, and I'm thinking, Oh my God, ED, it's my hometown. I've been there, I was on the board, and I, so I'm for the job, and I, and I got it. Two the rest is history. <laughs> two nights ago, I went over to Wakefield, because they allow other people to be members, and I'm a member at Winthrop, Cambridge. Yeah, how do you, how do, you do that, Joe? I mean, there are certain stations really? that let you be a member. Really? Because there's no place you have to work there, or go to school there, or yeah. uh, live there. Yeah, but in certain cities and towns, they allow you to. Really? Okay. Yeah, so Winthrop, I'm a member. Cambridge, I'm a member. Okay, so Wakefield, I went over. The tech didn't know me. There's a new techie there. there was, there's was. there been a bit of a revolving door. Yes, there. yes. So I said, okay. But Tom's wanna, still there, I think, right? Yeah, Tom and, and, uh, David. and David. So I said, you know, I want to join. So I just wrote out the check and left some DVDs. And <laughs> I haven't talked to them since because I've been so busy all week. Yeah. But I think I'm a member of Wakefield again. Well, I, I know they changed, they changed program directors. Uh, it's funny, uh, when I worked there... They have there, a woman now. Sean, Sean, right. Uh, when I worked there, Sean Downs was there. And <coughs> How's he doing? Do you know? <coughs> He's doing great. He had a stroke, that's I why know. you asked. But Young he, guy. But, oh, a yeah. Stroke. But his story is a lot like um, uh, Gretzky. Or is that his name? Who's, uh, no, uh, Brewski. Teddy Brewski. Teddy Brewski, where he really came back, not completely as much as Ted did, but now he works at Project Triangle, which, uh, by the way, got the award for, for best... Does he work with you? He works with Ablevision, not me. He works with Ablevision. But he comes over to Malden. Yeah. Yeah. So you see Sean. I see Sean, yeah. Tell him I said hello. I will. He's a great well, guy. Well, actually, I, I was just talking to him recently, because... Uh, uh, oh, I was talking to Elisa. I congratulated her. I wanted to see if she's going to Chicago to get the award, because it's going to be in Chicago. So I'm going out to Chicago to pick up four awards. So I'm, I'm happy Good for that. you. Um... Visual Radio has done 600 shows. One would think that uh, one would think an organization would go out of its way to go explore people that do 600 shows. Like Reeling, has Reeling ever won? Yeah, but they don't enter. You know, you got to yeah, enter but, the but win. I mean, that, my whole point is, how can you be the best in the country if there are all these shows and it's only the people that enter? And I'm uh, no, but it's got to be. You it. deserve. You it. have to enter it. Well, I entered it through here, but my feeling is. If you're going to make something the best in the country, go out and seek. You know, really... Yeah, that's what she's... I don't think it that way. I, you you got to promote your show. you gotta, you got to push it and promote it. And, I know. And that's what I'm saying. I think I wore down the judges, and, and that's how I won. <laughs> but they have different <laughs> judges at different stations, They, they right? do. Uh, in fact, the, the judging is supposed to be very democratic. It's supposed to be done by other access centers across the country. And I would hope that who judged... Uh, what's interesting is, you know, one video that I thought was going to win about, uh, it was a promo for Access, it's called Vi Voices of Democracy. It was great, but it didn't win. And I, and I was like, That's what? my point. That's my point. Now, Live yeah. on Tape deserves it because you've been involved for 22 years. Yeah. And, and I do think it was a great entry. I, I, was, I was very confident of, of it. And, and, and that's my point. If someone's been doing it, reeling, they should go out of their way to find reeling. Now, I believe reeling follows this show. Uh, on, on Malden or, or, or right other here. places? In, here in, in, in Winchester. Winchester. I think we have your reeling show. Yeah. And they've been doing a lot. Well, I could bring live on tape here. So would you, would you, who's, who could sponsor it? Do you have to get sponsors? I could sponsor it. Okay. Or, um, Dave Goth. Now they're a national. That's right. David knows the show. And you know who the programming guy is? That's what he, they, 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 Anthony's our programmer. Oh, okay. I, I've got Blue Hope you get I, the program on. You know, um, I got Blue so. Um, 
it's hard for me to remember. Yeah. But we have a public domain movie show on Friday nights. So at like 10 of, Frank Delastrito is going to call in from Alaska. Really? Are you getting a phone call coming in? Yeah. Because you did it on my show. I've never done it on my show. You were the we do it first time week. I ever did it. Oh, really? Okay. So um, Delastrito will call in. He's, a, 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 he's one of Bela Lugosi's biographers. Really? Yeah, he's a great guy. You did a great job because you had the phone come right in over all the speakers. It was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. But wasn't that fun? Oh, it was great. I, first of all, I was a little reluctant to do it, I must say, you know, to talk to a band member who I didn't really know. But it worked out great. And, uh, and the funny thing is the reason it wasn't working, he had the wrong number. We gave him the wrong number. Well, I gave him the wrong number. Because we have two talk shows, one downstairs, one upstairs. They're different phone numbers. So They loved it. They loved yeah. being on it. They oh, appreciated it. Oh, good. Okay. And, you know, it's fun for a band from Australia to know, hey, people in Malden know we exist. I know. He said, uh, you had trouble with, uh, you know, money to get here, get out here. And I said, uh, <laughs> ah, we'll chip in for you. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, so, <coughs> you know, this is, this is our little forum. And Wakefield, I just rejoined. So they went from that other school. Now, oh, see, this is, this is, this is uh, a local legend. 